I call this September 9th work session of the Oconee County Board of Education to order. Good evening, everyone. Before we begin tonight's meeting, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the tragedy that occurred at Appalachie High School and in Barrow County Schools community. Oconee County is grieving alongside you, and we stand ready to assist in the healing process any way we can. Our thoughts and prayers are with the students, families, educators, and first responders affected by this tragedy. Acts of violence like this remind us of the importance of community, support, and the ongoing need for vigilance, safety, and care in our schools. These past few days have been challenging and emotional for the Appalachie and Barrow County community, but we know that they are strong and will persevere. Our first item tonight is we need a motion to approve the agenda. So move. Mr. Second. Burgess, second. Mr. Ransom, all in favor? Passes 5-0. Next on our agenda is superintendent's report. Dr. Branch. Thank you, Ms. Argo, board members. Um, just want to echo my heartfelt sentiments uh, again regarding Appalachia and, and our friends in Barrow County. Um, we know they're hurting and we're hurting as well. And we'll continue to grieve with them, be here for them. Uh, and assist them and our own community, and you'll hear more about that later. It's been a challenging and emotional week. Uh, a tragedy of this magnitude affects all of us uh, differently, uh, but also the same. And so uh, the, the magnitude of this is certainly uh, something that gives us pause. It's an appropriate time for us to offer each other grace, empathy, but also for us to reflect um, and all those are necessary and appropriate for us to do that at this point. Uh, this tragedy has challenged Oconee County Schools to reflect on our safety and security protocols, and Dr. Jan Yancey will be discussing that later tonight in our work session. Uh, and just for the board's knowledge, I think you're aware of this, anytime anything occurs uh, within related to school safety, we're always going to be reviewing our protocols and procedures whether it is as close as this tragedy has been or whether it's across the country. And uh, we've continued to do that over the course of my tenure and I know Sheriff Hale's tenure uh, and those before us. This is normal protocol and appropriate uh, as well. So I want to uh, state that uh, as we get started and also highlight a few of the things that have taken place since we last met. We had the opportunity for Representative Houston Gaines to uh, chair the House Study Committee on Safety and Consumer Protection of Nicotine Vapor Products uh, at the Instructional Support Center last week. Uh, that, those committee members actually sat uh, up here in this area, and we had our staff and their staff. Uh, Sheriff Hale was here as well as was I and several other community members and individuals around the state. So um, it's following up with uh, Representative Gaines at the conclusion of that. He said this was a perfect venue and really wanted to share his appreciation for the opportunity to host something uh, related to our school system and other school systems uh, and use the fine facility that has been created. Uh, up next, uh, on a, a much lighter note and a celebratory note, we did get a chance to uh, announce the 12 Teachers of the Year last week, and we're excited to celebrate these extraordinary educators and announce the District Teacher of the Year. As you know, that'll happen on Thursday, September the 26th at the Civic Center, and so we look forward to the board's attendance on that, as well as our school leaders and our Teachers of the Year and their families. A couple of other items uh, that have occurred. We did also uh, last week get a chance to meet with our superintendent advisory panels. Board members, as you know, we meet with parents, teachers, and students uh, on successive days uh, going forward. So we met with our 12 parents, our 12 juniors and senior students, and also 
our 12 teachers of the year, we'll add 12 more teachers of the year to that advisory panel. And uh, we were able to talk about uh, things such as calendar. Obviously, we talked about school safety and, uh, and the events of the week and then provided them a tour of the Instructional Support Center. Uh, these are play a crucial role in providing us feedback, and it really is a two-way communication. And so we have that set uh, those days back to back to back with our staff engaging with those individuals so that hopefully our communication and the communication that's happening in our community at the parent, teacher, and student level are all centered around the same topic. The, uh, the last thing that I have are some athletic updates. We've not uh, been able to join together since the Hog Mountain Bowl, and what a wonderful, great community event. I think numbers were, uh, were close to around 7,000 uh, that were there that night. Uh, and so standing room only, and then maybe not even enough room to stand in certain areas. Uh, but a uh, great event, and we, as you know, have had a great fall so far with football, softball, volleyball, cross country, and competition cheerleading, as well as flag football is uh, starting up soon. And uh, we, we just can't tell you how much we appreciate the support of the board and the community to get, offer these athletic a activities to our students and round out their experiences. Also want to uh, let you know that we have activities taking place both at middle school and high school. And thank you for allowing our sixth graders to participate at the middle school level. This is our second year in those uh, students being able to participate and our middle school principals and parents uh, have talked often about how exciting that is for those students to be able to plug in right from the start of walking into the building. So that will conclude superintendent's report unless there are any questions. Thank you, Dr. Branch. Yes, ma'am. Next on our agenda is presentations and discussions. First is our teaching and learning report. Welcome, Dr. Stancil. Thank you. The, teaching, the September 2024 teaching and learning report contains one item of information and no action items. The first item of information is regarding our title funding process and how those funds are allocated. One program that falls under title funding is Title I-A. We receive funds under this program to improve academic achievement for our students. Allocations are determined by the state and are based on the number of enrolled low-income students at each institution. Every fall, Oconee County Schools invites all private schools who have students who live in Oconee County to participate in consultation meetings regarding Title I-A funds. We work with these schools to help them understand the portion of our funds they are eligible to receive. For private schools that participate, OCS helps them create their required plans for use of these funds. The two private schools that are eligible and receive Title I funds are St. Joseph Catholic Parish School, and they receive $6,319, and Wasika Montessori School, which receives $1,149. The next program under title is Title IIA, Improving Teacher Quality Through Professional Learning. We use these funds to provide professional development support for our teachers throughout the year. For this program, private schools are also eligible to receive funds for teachers' professional development if the school itself is located within the geographic boundaries of our county. All private schools within the geographic region are invited each fall to participate in a consultation meeting with Oconee County School staff. We work with them to help them develop a professional learning plan and to submit a proposed budget. The following schools have chosen to participate this year. Athens Academy, and their total is $12,571. Westminster Christian Academy, their total is $6,441. And Prince Avenue Christian, their total is $13,881. In addition to helping our private schools create their plans and budget, we also manage all expenditures throughout the year in regards to these funds. That concludes the teaching and learning report, unless there are questions. Any questions? Thank you. Next is student services. Welcome, Dr. Yancey.
Good evening, Dr. Branch and board members. The September 2024 student services report contains one item of information and 13 action items. Before I begin with my action item of information, I would like to again echo what Ms. Margo, Ms. Argo, apologize, and Dr. Branch said regarding the tragic incident in Barrow County. Oconee County will stand beside Barrow County and provide support as needed. Today we had five team members from the OCH, OCS family, our two school social workers, Leanne Hill and Brian Bishop, and three counselors from our high schools, Megan Hoadley, Jody Anderson, and Kevin Guthis, serve at Appalachie High School to support students and staff. We'll continue to be supportive throughout the week and as needed moving forward. The first item of information is a review of our school safety procedures and measures. Safety in our schools is critical for all students and staff. We continue to work in conjunction with our law enforcement partners and first responders to ensure our practices are appropriate for our 12 campuses. It is our intention and practice to continually evaluate the safety and security protocols throughout the days, weeks, and months of each school year. At this time, I will review the current measures we actively and consistently implement on each of our 12 campuses. Oconee County Schools implements a number of security and safety measures to ensure our students and staff can learn and work in a safe and orderly environment. All of our schools implement prevention measures to promote the safety of our students and staff and review the following prevention measures are utilized in all of our schools. Access controls allow staff members key card access for secured entry points via exterior and interior doors. Inside the building, these access controls allow our staff to move fluidly through the building. Also, through the use of access controls, we can manage the point of entry for visitors. In addition, the Oconee County Sheriff's Office has key cards that allow their entry into all 12 of our school buildings. Oconee County Schools began equipping doors with ac access controls in 2014, and just this past year, we've added 24 additional access controls. Security cameras. Each school has cameras on the interior and exterior of the building. Camera placement in our building was done through the collaboration of Oconee County Sheriff's Office. The main use of these cameras is for safety and security purposes, and the local law enforcement has access to view all of our cameras on all of our campuses. This past year, the school district added 46 cameras throughout our 12 school campuses. Security vestibules. Each school in Oconee County has been equipped with a security vestibule as a main point of entry after the start of the school day. This entryway includes a locking mechanism that keeps the general public separate from our students and staff. Entry into our schools is controlled to only allow those with school-related business to enter our buildings. Vestibules were added to elementary schools in 2013 and middle schools in 2014. Visitor management system, our visitor management system, Raptor, which we have been a customer with since 2015, allows us to track who is in our building and who has gained access to our students and staff. This system allows us also to check each visitor against the National Sex Offenders Registry list each time an ID is scanned. And School Messenger is a messaging system linked to all school websites and the district website that allows individuals to report any threat, big or small, to our school and district administration. The person reporting the threat can remain anonymous or can identify themselves. Annually, each school in the district participates in proactive preparation surrounding emergency planning and response. Throughout the school year, each school will simulate lockdown drills with the cooperation of the Sheriff's Office and EMA. After each drill is completed, feedback is provided from the collaborating agencies. In addition, schools host nine fire drills and two severe weather drills each school year. During the summer months, Oconee County School collaborates with local agencies such as the Sheriff's Office, EMA, Fire and Rescue, and National EMS to use our facilities for training purposes. This past summer, Dove Creek Middle School and North Oconee High School were used for advanced law enforcement rapid response training. In addition to our local agencies that participated, several 
outside agencies, including Homeland Security, Georgia State Patrol, University of North Georgia, Western Carolina University, Fulton County, athens Clark County, Jackson County, Habersham County, Bartow County, and Pickens County participated in the alert, alert, the alert training exercise. As you can see from the pictures, not only did we host the event, but each of our 12 schools had representatives involved and engaged in the training session. Oconee County Schools uses Centegic's crisis alert system to effectively communicate with local law enforcement if a lockdown occurs. Oconee County Schools partnered with Centegic's in June of 2019 as one of the first school districts in the nation to implement this effective communication method in the event of an emergency. As a reminder, each one of our staff members wears a Centegic's badge and can activate an alert when needed. When the system is activated, there are audio and visual cues throughout the building to alert individuals that we have entered our lockdown protocol. School and district administrators, as well as every law enforcement agent within our county, receives the alert of who pushed the badge and where the person is located within the building. Through the use of our crisis alert system and our camera system, law enforcement can arrive at one of our school campuses informed of where the potential threat is located and how they would need to proceed to isolate and remove it. To close this item of information, I would like to acknowledge the Oconee County Sheriff's Office and our local partners. Tonight we are joined, joined by Sheriff Hale, uh, Chief Deputy Wazden, and Captain Smith. Um, and I would like to just acknowledge their attendance tonight and thank them for their partnership. Sheriff Hale and his team have been heavily involved in our emergency planning as we work together to keep our students and staff safe. There's nothing we do regarding school safety that we do not consult and take guidance from our Sheriff's Office. On July 31st, Dr. Branch and I were able to meet with Sheriff Hale and Captain Smith to review our procedures and measures of school safety. At that time, at the time of our meeting, it was the agreement of both Oconee County Schools and the Oconee County Sheriff's Office that all practices were appropriate for all 12 of our campuses. Board members, the tragedy of Appalachia High School last week deeply impacted each and every one of us. When something of this magnitude occurs, it is prudent that we have the types of conversations we have had throughout last week and into this week with our law enforcement partners. While the current security model has kept students and staff safe, Oconee County Schools and the Oconee County Sheriff's Office agree on the need to review collectively all protocols we have in place. Tonight I am informing the board that in cooperation with the Sheriff's Office, we will be placing a school resource officer at North Oconee High School and Oconee County High School. It is also recomm the recommendation this evening that the board consider an action item to authorize the superintendent to work with the Sheriff's Office to develop a memorandum of agreement to provide a comprehensive law enforcement presence at all 12 schools. In addition, the first action item, in addition to the first action item, Student Services has 12 more action items Each is an out-of-state field trip. The superintendent's recommendation is to approve the 12 field trips as presented. And this concludes student services report unless you have any additional questions. Questions? Can you describe um, the difference in a resource officer and, and just one of the typical sheriff's deputies that we have on campus and then describe the role of the resource officer? Sure, an SRO is assigned to a campus, obviously, um, and would not take any service calls outside off that campus. Uh, they both are law enforcement officers and can enforce, obviously, laws and rules, but uh, in a situation, in a school setting, there's things that they would have to abide by to uh, be in conjunction with the school administration on campus. I have a couple questions. Um, 
I'm, I'm glad to see this recommendation coming up and also just think about all of our students. Um, obviously, when a student's in our system, we have student records, student files on that student. Um, when we have a student that's transferring into our system, what information do we receive on that student? So we receive all educational records that come along with that student. So anything from attendance grades, discipline, um, anything that's involved, if the student has a disability or 504, we receive all that as well. Okay, so that would include historical disciplinary records? At the school level, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I also think through, you know, obviously we're, we're sending our team members over to Barrow County to be able to, to support those in need right now. Um, could you detail what other resources do we provide? I mean, there, there are families that are in crisis at different times throughout the course of the year. There are students that are in crisis throughout the course of the year um, for one reason or another. What resources do we have to help those students and those families in our normal course of business? Sure. So internally, we have a numerous sources that we can provide, but you know, what we're very fortunate in our community that we have access to outside uh, connections that we can wrap around the student or wrap around the family, but inside counseling, uh, nurses, social workers, and there's a ton of things that just fall under those areas that we can support students and, and even into involving outside organizations. If, it, if uh, food is an issue, OARC, things of that nature, we have plenty of partners that are willing to help. And OARC also does the, leads the mentor program as well, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll just make a, a brief comment. Um, I just wanted to say I know that um, a lot of us, a lot of y'all that work for Oconee County Schools are, have close ties to the Barrow County community. And I know how painful it was for me to see one of our past leaders um, having to go through that. And I just want to say thank you all. I know you all are hurting too, and I appreciate the work that you're doing to recognize um, the needs of our community. Anyone else? I have comment. Um, it was truly a heartbreaking and tragic event that occurred in Barrow County and safety and security is a priority. Our goal should be to create an environment where teachers can focus on teaching, students can concentrate on learning, and our parents can, can feel safe and have peace of mind that they're sending their children to a safe environment. I come at, come at this from a different perspective than the other board members because I am a retired teacher. I spent 24 years in the classroom and then at the end of my career, I worked as administrator in a neighboring county. I did work with an SRO in our building and I know the value that they can bring to a school not only can they help with safety protocols, they can also engage with the students, support the teachers, perform extra duties like possibly lunchroom supervision. It's important that students feel safe and that our teachers and staff feel safe. I, uh, I worked as a teacher 18 years here in Oconee County, I, this is my 16th year on the school board. My children attended Oconee County Schools. My daughter graduated with Sheriff Hale. I love this community. I love our schools. We want to do what's best for our students. And I do support school resource officers. Thank you. One more thing, just for clarification, Mr. Yancey, Dr. Yancey, can you repeat the action item that you're asking us to vote on next week? Yes, ma'am. It is also the recommendation this evening that the board consider an action item to authorize the superintendent to work with the sheriff's office to develop a memorandum of agreement to provide a comprehensive law enforcement presence at 12 schools at the 12 schools. Thank you. Anybody else have comments? Thank you, Dr. Yancey. Yes, ma'am. 
Next on our agenda is special education. Welcome, Ms. Corngold. Good evening, board members and Dr. Branch. The Oconee County School Special Education uh, September 9th Board of Education report contains two items of information and one action item. The first item of information is our Oconee County Parent Survey. The survey is um, to collect data on the state performance plan indicator number eight. It's called parent involvement. Indicator, indicator eight refers to the percent of parents um, with children receiving special education services who report that the schools facilitate parent involvement as a means of improving student services and results for their disability. Uh, the first chart here will uh, show you that um, this is the uh, number of parent, oh, this is the percentage, I'm sorry, of parents who participated and were in agreement of the positive relationships and forth resources that they have in the school. Last year it was 96 points, or yeah, 68, but we rounded up to 97. This year we were a solid 97 point four, something like that. So we're in the 97 percent for um, parent satisfactory. The second one is t showing you the number of parents that um, participated. We continue to increase our parent participation. This past year we had 712 parents that participated in the parent survey, knowing that the number of um, participants could affect the number of you know, your positive results. But our results continue to show positive um, results as well as increasing the number of parents who are participating in our state survey. I want to thank the principals. They play a huge part um, in this parent involvement and participation with their special education department. The second item of information is our child find screening. Uh, each year, the uh, preschool special needs is a federally funded program, and it's mandated by IDEA, requires a range of educational supports for preschool students ages three to five. Any age student from three to five who experiences difficulty or delays in cognitive communication, motor, social, or adaptive development may be referred for services for us. Parents, preschool teachers, pediatricians, and, and other, para, other professionals can refer the child for a screening. This is our preschool team right here and some pictures of their screening day. Sorry about that. Can you fix this? Oh, sorry. That'll, now you got a preview of what was coming. <laughs> <laughs> no surprises. Um, these are the dates of our preschool screenings, um, and we do advertise um, one, two, and the one in October is advertised in the paper. But this is in all of our preschools, and in, um, we share with our pediatricians as well, so they can refer students for screenings. The last item is an action item, and it is our shared service contract that we do every year with Northeast Georgia RESA. Um, this is for special education shared services, and it is a recommendation that the superintendent approves the Northeast Georgia RESA special education contract for $429,045.72. Questions? Questions? Thank you. <laughs> we'll Next. Off, we'll offer Ms. Corngold some additional training opportunities <laughs> at the conclusion of this meeting. And following her is our technology guru. Welcome, Mr. McCullers. We might want to save that after my, my speech. Let's see here. 
Good evening, board members. The Coney County Schools Technology Services uh, report contains one item of information and no action items. Information item number one, update on the technology services facilities. I'd like to update you on the status of our network operations and instructional technology facilities at the School Street Complex. The building that was formerly, that formerly hosted business services is now the Network Operations Building. This facility houses our main network infrastructure for the district. It is staffed by our network specialist, our system specialist, and our installation specialist. This building provides essential space for component assembly and testing, as well as organization and storage. This space is crucial for maintaining the network's integrity and ensuring that our technology systems run smoothly across the district. The building that was formerly the Teaching and Learning Building is now the Instructional Technology Building. This facility houses office space for each of our instructional technology specialists. It features collaborative spaces designed to facilitate, facilitate communication and coordination among our ITS staff and educators. This space is integral to our mission of enhancing educational technology and supporting instructional needs. Last, the building that for formerly hosted our board meetings is now the Technology Administrative Building. Here you will find the Technology Secretary, Database Administrators, and Technology Specialist. This facility handles financial matters, ordering, receiving, and management of our student information system. Additionally, it includes a large conference room that is utilized for various training and meetings, further supporting our technology initiatives. As you can see, each building plays a crucial role in ensuring that our technology infrastructure is robust, our schools are well supported, and our administrative processes are efficient. Our staff in these buildings are currently working on several key projects, including transitioning our staff devices to Windows 11, training our teachers to effectively implement new curriculum resources, and supporting our school's utilization of Infinite Campus. I would like to thank the board for the support and resources provided, which have made these facilities and their functions possible. As you can see by the faces in these pictures, we are very happy with our new setup. That concludes the technology services report, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions, comments? Thank you. Battery's dead. That's <laughs> we have a backup. We'll be offering uh, Mr. Technology Man an opportunity as well for additional <laughs> training at the conclusion of the meeting. Next, we have a report from operations. Welcome, Dr. White. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, board members and Dr. Branch. Operations has three items of information and one action item for this evening. The first informational item for operations is an update on our energy report. Our kilowatt usage per day for 1,000 square feet has been updated for the month of July. Next slide, please. The second informational item is our transportation update. For the previous month, we had two field trips, 74 athletic trips, 113 buses deployed for a total of 7,702.1 miles. Next slide, please. Our third item of information is an update on school nutrition participation for the month of August. Board members, you'll see that we saw an increase in participation for breakfast of 2.24% and lunch of 3.04% as compared to August of 2023. Next slide, please. Operations action item for next week's regular session is our vehicle surplus list. You'll see that we have 11 buses that need to be surplus based on our replacement cycle and cost of repairs. This concludes the operations report unless there are any questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we have Mr. Rickardson to talk about facilities. Good evening. <laughs> the Kearney County Schools Operations and Facilities September 9th, 2024 Board of Education Report contains two items of information and one action item for the September 16th, 2024 Board of Education meeting. Next slide. <clears throat> First item of information is the lead custodian meeting. The August lead custodian meeting was held on Thursday, August the 8th, and was hosted by the team at Column Ferry Elementary School. The team discussed the proper procedure for cleaning cafeteria tables, 
as well as other items. Our custodial teams are to be commended for the rigorous work ensuring that our schools are clean for health. Next slide. Second item of inf information is construction update uh, for the Instructional Support Center. The contractor continues to work to complete punch list items. We're getting close, but there are a few things we're still working on. Next slide. Generators. The generators are on order. We're expecting them to begin arriving in early spring. The contractor has begun to do in preparatory work in the school so that we can be ready once the generators arrive. Next slide. <clears throat> we do have one action item. That's the certificate of the board. A certificate of the board certifies that the project is complete and is that all vendors have been paid in full. These certificates are for the FY23 Department of Education application projects for the Oconee Primary School renovation and modifications. Oconee Elementary School modifications, and Oconee High School modifications. It's the superintendent's recommendation for the Board of Education to approve the certificate uh, of the board at the September 16, 2024 board meeting. That concludes the uh, fac facilities report, unless there are any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have communications. Welcome, Mr. Colquitt. Thank you, Ms. Arango. Good evening, board members and Dr. Branch. Uh, the uh, uh, communications report this evening has two items of information. The first are our social media impressions for the month of August. You'll see that uh, uh, combined across all three platforms, uh, anytime we put up a post, it averaged 8,300 impressions. That's the number of times it appeared on a screen or a device. So. We're, we're pleased with that number. We also had uh, 7,700 uh, opens of our electronic newsletter that went out to our to our stakeholders as well. So very pleased with the numbers we saw during the month of August, as you might imagine, with Back to School, Hog Mountain Bowl, Meet the Teacher, things like that. But our number one post for the month was about bus safety. Uh, and I appreciate the number of people who shared that post because that gave it more traction and, and got the information out that we're trying to get. So we're trying to make meaningful posts uh, that certainly was a meaningful post, and we're glad to see that it got so much, uh, so much attention. Second item of information are the August highlights video. That concludes communications, unless there are any questions for me. Any questions, comments? Thank you. We do need to go into executive session and need a motion to do so. Thank you, Ms. Parrish. Second. Second, Mr. Hammock, all in favor? Passes 5-0, thank you.